You're looking at the maximum security facility at Megalyn, where a vigil is taking place tonight to protest the execution of Grady Finch. Finch is scheduled to die by lethal injection for the murder of convenience store owner Harold Park. And though he has maintained his innocence from the start, there's at least one person out here who believes Grady Finch is getting exactly what he deserves. Nathan Park is the eldest son of the victim and one of the witnesses for tonight's execution. Now, Mr. Park, I understand you have a request for Mr. Finch. That's right. I'm asking Mr. Finch to finally admit his guilt. Admit that he murdered my father so my family can put this nightmare behind us once and for all. Maybe I should talk to him. Face to face. Convince him that I didn't do this. He'll never believe you. He needs someone to blame. I wasn't even in the store. They convicted me on the testimony uh, of a junkie looking to cut a deal. But Mr. Finch, hold still, please. You have good veins, so everything should go smoothly. Can I talk about it, please? I hate needles. I understand. I'm done. We should be hearing from the governor about the state of execution, right? He's reviewing your clemency petition as we speak. And you, you told him I didn't do it. You talked to him. I mean, I've, done, I've done some bad things in my life. I've never killed anybody. I swear to God. Grady, listen to me. Okay, we've done everything we can. Right. Don't give up hope. The governor's just called. How does it go? The truth shall set you free? But try telling that to Grady Finch, a man about to pay for a crime he swears he didn't commit. Now, all he can do is put his faith in a higher justice and pray for a miracle. CC's a sailing solution just to confirm that the device is working properly. <laughs> if you want to make a final statement, now's the time. I'm innocent. You're killing an innocent man. Liar! He has to confess his guilt! Why won't he tell the truth? We're now going to administer the anesthetic.
What is it? We have to postpone the execution. What are you talking about? The injection machine completely froze up. I've never seen anything like it. I don't believe this. You're traveling to another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are only that of the imagination. You're entering the Twilight Zone. Grady, I have some news I think you're gonna like. 1998, Jones versus Florida. It was a botched execution, same as yours, except it was a faulty electric chair. Jones's lawyer argued that to put him through it again would be cruel and unusual punishment, and it bought him a year. Grady, are you hearing me? This gives us precedent. The state can execute you, but they can't torture you. This could give us a whole year to try and push through another appeal. Maybe that's what she meant. What who meant? Right after I passed out, I heard this woman's voice whispering, not yet. Grady, you were sedated. You were under tremendous stress. I know what I heard. Well, you want to believe in guardian angels, fine. But as far as the state's concerned, it was a faulty air pump on the injection device. I'm very sorry for all the confusion earlier. I think we finally got the situation under control. What does that mean for my client? It means we're ready to try again. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What, what about, what's his name, Jones versus Florida? I was just about to file a new motion to stay execution. I'm sorry, but we've got to get this done by midnight. Otherwise, the governor has to issue a new court order, and that could take days. My client's willing to wait. Yeah. Well, the governor isn't. He wants us to proceed as planned. Now, we brought in a brand new device, one that's been thoroughly tested. Mr. Finch, you have our sincere apologies for what you've gone through. I give you my word. We'll have no more mishaps. On to the gurney, please. Time, Grady. Not yet. Help him to his feet. Damn it, now. Well, where is he? Well, I don't think we have a choice. There's an electrical fire somewhere in the building. We're going to have to go through the evacuation procedures. I'm telling you, he's innocent. And I believe God has shown us his sign. Twice in one day, he has spared Grady Finch from death. We appeal to the governor to accept God's judgment and allow Grady Finch to live. Save Grady Finch! 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 Save Grady
I mean, I've been up all night thinking, why me? I don't know, maybe because you're innocent? You really think I'm the only innocent guy on death row? Well, whatever answer you're looking for, Grady, I don't have it. There's got to be a reason this would be happening. A reason for keeping me alive. Not yet. That, that's what you keep saying. I hate to remind you of this, but the state has decided that not yet means 4 p.m. tomorrow. I got a weird feeling it's not the state's decision. Are you comfortable, Mr. Pinch? No complaints? As you know, you're allowed a final statement. Let's get on with it. Anybody ever tell you cigarettes are bad for your health? I survived two lethal injections and a couple thousand volts of electricity. A little nicotine won't kill me. I wouldn't press my luck if I were you. Oh, hold that thought. Breakfast has arrived. Great. Gentlemen, thank you. I'm right here. There you go. Oh, and, uh, waiter, these are all beef. Hmm? Tom Shaw, you want a bite? No, that's okay. God, look at you. A week ago, you couldn't keep food down. Oh. A week ago, I didn't know I had a guardian angel. I thought you said she was just a voice. Hmm. The first two times, yeah. But when I was in that chair, I saw her. It was just a flash, but I can't get her out of my head. She had wings? Oh, yeah, that's how I knew she was my guardian angel. Hmm. You don't believe me. Look, I don't know what I believe. All I know is that you've got a press conference in 30 minutes. Hmm. Are you sure you don't want my... Grady, I need you to focus. Now, with all the press you've been getting, the state's star witness is willing to recant his testimony. We're not just talking about a stay of execution anymore. We're talking about a retrial. It's about time that junkie son of a bitch told the truth. <sighs> I need you to present yourself as an innocent man who's been brutalized by the state's incompetence. That you have already suffered the tortures of the damned. That you've become the victim here. Hey, hey. No worries. I got it covered. Good. Now, I, I don't want to hear any talk about visions or, or voices or guardian angels. No, I don't know her name, but she definitely had wings. Mr. Fish. Yes. There are hundreds of inmates on death row. What makes you so special? Well, at first I thought it was just because I'm innocent. But now I believe I've been spared because I have a destiny to fulfill. All right, no more questions. Wait, I want to hear more about Mr. Finch's destiny. Well, it's simple, really. I am living proof that there is a higher justice. And when I win my freedom, it will be my duty to spread the word to all of those who have lost hope. The righteous will be rewarded. The innocent will be set free. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you. We agreed you weren't going to say anything about the issues. I'm sorry, Liz. Uh, the people need to know there's a higher justice, right? We want higher justice.
Anybody else want to take a shot? Go ahead, you can't kill me. No one can. Yeah. I think the jury's going to find you innocent. Is it true that you're not present charges against Nathan Park? Uh, my heart goes out to Mr. Park. I only hope that one day the police find his father's real killer. Brady, Brady, please. Can I have your autograph? Catch me on the way out. Mr. Finch, Mr. Finch, my husband has been on death row for three years. Can you help him? Is he innocent? I know he is. Tell him not to worry. Tell him Grady Finch said, not yet. Man, you realize this is just the beginning. Of what? Well, I've been thinking there's got to be a book deal and all this, maybe even my own talk show. You get a not guilty verdict, you can start your own religion. I've thought of that. I'm sure you did. OK, Liz, one second. I have a message that needs to be heard. Now I'm asking you, will you help me spread that message? Grady, all this that's been happening to you, this is all just luck and coincidence. Luck and coincidence? How can you say that? You were there. You witnessed the truth. There is a reason I cannot be killed. I'm talking about divine intervention here. Grady, let's just win the case. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. We find the defendant Grady Stephen Finch, not guilty. quite a crowd out there. You sure you're ready for this? No turning back now. <laughs> God, who would have thought the night I walked into that convenience store it would all turn out like this? You said you were never in that store. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to kill him. He wouldn't give me the money. All this time you've been lying. You're not seeing the bigger picture here. What bigger picture? I had no choice. Mr. Park had to die. How else could I realize my destiny? You killed a man. You destroyed his family. And his son was begging you to confess, begging you to tell the truth. What's the point? He wants revenge, and I can't be killed. <laughs> Not yet. That's right. Not yet.
It's said that truth and justice go hand in hand. Just ask Grady Finch, who thought he could cheat them both. Consider Grady's fate nothing more than a sentence deferred in the Twilight Zone.